so the, the, the record as far as movement is a white shark from South Africa. Um, this white shark was satellite tagged on the Cape Coast and it swam all the way to just a little bit, got to Australia, 5,200 miles one way. And that's where the tag ca um, came off. So the story would have ended there, except for they had a picture of the dorsal fin of this shark. And there was someone doing a photo ID study on this coast. And they actually saw this shark again six months later, right in the exact spot it was tagged. So um, that's a round trip of over 10,000 uh, miles. So quite a big quite a big movement for a white shark, or any other th animal for that matter. So what are they doing out there in the deep ocean? We don't really know because from these satellite tags you just get some information on position. Um, some types of satellite tags actually give you depth and temperature experienced. And what the crazy thing is, is when they're out there, de when they're out there in the pelagic zone, they make some wicked deep dives. In fact, um, some of them make dives down to 3,000 feet which is in the vicinity of where these big six-gill sharks are, which would be like almost two times the Empire State Building down. So they'll go make these big deep dives and then they come up and they hang out on the surface for ages, probably to warm up, and then they'll do another big deep dive. So my guess is, that's, to me, that's reminiscent of something sperm whales do. So I would postulate that they might be going down after squid or maybe six-gill sharks. So um, what about, let's get back to our area, what do they do in our area? So um, there's, in the news recently you might have seen there's been a lot of um, sightings of white sharks up in Massachusetts near Cape Cod. And a, a researcher, a colleague, has put some of these satellite tags on white sharks. And um, I, I think he's done four or five. And he just did it last year. And he's thinking, wicked, they're going to go out here, that's going to be great, that's going to be a real big news story. Well, like always, the white shark throws a big monkey wrench in it. <laughs> the white sharks just go down the coast and they go off Jacksonville. And so they are there in summer, they work their way down, they're here in winter, and then they come back. All four or five did that. Not a single one of them went out in the ocean out here. So again, just goes to show you have to study them all over the place to really get a sense of what's going on. But when, I, when, I re when he told me that about the you know, summers up here, New York area, you know, winters down here, I immediately thought of another animal that makes that same migration. <laughs> These guys, snowbirds. So white sharks are just like snowbirds. So the, the satellite tracking technology has really changed what we know about these white sharks. So the, the old view was coastal temperate, but now with these fancy electronic tags, which cost $5,000 a pop, um, we now know they're offshore and tropical as well. So they're much more, much, much better understanding of their ecology and much better understanding of the threats to white sharks. So what's the management status of white sharks right now? So it's a protected species almost everywhere you go. Um, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, California, Oregon. Here with us, the white shark's been protected since 1997. So you're not allowed to kill white sharks recreationally, commercially. Um, so that's all well and good, right? We don't have anything to worry about. They're protected. Well, not quite so simple. Um, this, is, this is a juvenile white shark caught off Delaware by recreational anglers. Um, they, they landed it. Um, plopped it down. I think US Fish and Wildlife Office was right here and the guy came out and was like, this is a white shark and um, they didn't know. They said, well, I didn't, didn't know it was a white shark. Didn't know it was protected species. Well, no, they said they didn't know it was a white shark. They, they said they didn't know. Um, here's one closer to home. This summer at the start, one of, one of the shark tournaments, uh, a bunch of guys brought in a white shark. Um, completely, again, they, they explain uh, the rules to the fishermen, the, which species you're not allowed to take. They brought it in. They said, well, I didn't know it was a white shark. I thought it was a, a Marco. Um, so white sharks, the juveniles especially, are getting accidentally caught by recreational anglers who don't know how to identify the animal. And to be honest, I think that's a horrible excuse because they're very, very easy to identify. So if you're a recreational angler, and you're putting a hook in the water, you should know which species are prohibited and which are not. Um, so there are, it doesn't matter, ignorance of the law is no defense, and both of these people uh, uh, got fined 
um, uh, for, for landing the fish. Of course, together with the, you know, you, you're supposed to release the sharks, sometimes they don't. Of course, we have an area where there's a lot of these things, gill nets, trawl nets, and, we ca and white sharks are notorious for swimming into these things. So there's still bycatch of white sharks, especially juveniles, in these sorts of fishing methods. And partially the white sharks, there's all sorts of other things like the smooth dogfish caught in these nets. The white sharks probably come in to scavenge those and they get, they get caught themselves. So even though they're protected, they swim into nets, they usually drown in the nets, and, and that's that. So um, what happens to a white shark that gets caught accidentally by a fisherman? Well, unfortunately, I think it's not uncommon that they, they might use the white shark uh, illegally. And the reason I say that um, is some work I've done personally with uh, the shark fin trade. So many of you are probably aware that um, in, in some cultures the, the uh, Shark fin is used to make a delicacy called shark fin soup. Uh, the shark fin soup is, uh, fetches $100 a bowl, and it's kind of like a status symbol. Um, uh, so it's a very, uh, as a result, shark fins are one of the most expensive seafood products in the world by weight. So a hammerhead shark fin, for example, goes for $120 US dollars a kilogram. So that's, that's almost like caviar. So, um, I, my very great suspicion is when sharks, these white sharks get caught, they're probably their fins are taken and they're utilized. So the reason I, I'm not, that's not just speculation. In, in Brooklyn, um, there was a, a, a few years ago, I helped some uh, law enforcement personnel on a case whereby they, they had gone to the seafood dealer in Brooklyn and he had 2,000 kilograms of shark fins in his warehouse. And he was bragging to them, they were, they were investigating for something else, and they were bragging to him, he, he was bragging to them that he was one of the biggest shark fin dealers in the, on the East Coast. And what they actually started saying, oh yeah, and they started poking around, and they found the big bag of fins that was labeled poor beagle. Now, poor beagle is a relative of white shark, and it's a legal shark to keep, you're allowed to keep the fins of poor beagles. But they, they dug through the fins and they found another bag that had, um, 21 fin sets in, inside it. And the outside label for that bag was the word Blanco. And Blanco is the Spanish word for white. So the law enforcement personnel became very uh, suspicious that these could be white sharks. So I actually came up here, this was my first visit to New York ever, some time ago. These are the fins. So that's one of the big dorsal fins. This is the peripectoral fins. So there's a lot of small ones. You can see there's some big ones. So I took genetic samples. Um, my wife and I actually developed the DNA test for white sharks. Basically, if you have DNA from a white shark and you line it up with DNA from related sharks, you'll see that there are areas where the sequence is different, the ATCs are di different. And we saw where these genetic differences existed. We developed a test so that if you got DNA from an unknown species, you would just look for those diagnostic areas and it would tell you you've got yourself a white shark. So we, we, we took samples from those 21 fin sets, ran the DNA test and proved uh, without any doubt whatsoever all 21 came from white sharks. And I measured all the fins and, and there was some regression uh, information. I could figure out the total length of the animal round about. 18 of them were sharks less than two years old. They were in that size range of like this. Um, there was a few that were bigger, that were probably mature adults. Um, so 18 were young sharks. Uh, the the, the um, dealer did not have a good day. He got a $750,000 fine for these. Um, so, so that was kind of a, a, you know, that sent a message to the, to the dealers that you're not to buy these, these fins. So, um, Something good that stemmed from that was right around the same time we were doing this work, there was a meeting of, of this uh, international, or, um, international uh, treaty called the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, or CITES. And CITES is simply a treaty between uh, a whole bunch of countries, um, and it's to do with the management of trade in endangered species. And every four years, they get together 
they meet and they decide whether species are endangered enough to be listed and if the species is listed then there's all kinds of trade restrictions on using their, their parts. Now white sharks, um, up until this time there were no sharks at all on CITES. Um, actually there was one, the basking shark. Um, in 2000 the great white shark had been proposed for listing but the listing these species on these treaties requires a two-third majority vote and uh, the countries that were opposed to white sharks being on CITES said there was no way to enforce it. They said a shark fin is a shark fin is a shark fin. We could put it on CITES but there's no way I could tell the white shark from any others so it's, this rule would not be enforceable hence we will not put it on, on this list. The other thing they said is even though we can't tell a white shark fin from a white shark fin from a white shark fin, we just know there's none in there. Trust us, there's, there's none in there. They don't, they don't, we don't like the, shark, the white shark fin. That was literally the argument. So um, they were rejected in 2000. But in 2004, um, they were nominated again by Australia and Madagascar. And they had our data with our DNA tests. And they also had our data showing there was 21 fin sets in this Brooklyn seafood warehouse. So that actually, the, the DNA test actually removed the enforceability because now you've got a DNA test so you can tell a white shark fin from others. And it's pretty hard to say that there's no fin trade when one dealer that, we, that got snapped had 21 of them um, that he was getting ready to ship to these countries. So... Um, you know, there was a lot of other factors going on, but these little pieces of science helped, and uh, it, the white shark did get the supermajority in 2004, and then they've been listed on this on CITES thereafter.